Good morning. It's Thursday, July 11th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Evidence of Faith, and our scripture is James chapter 2. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, Goodbye, have a good day, stay warm, eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it's dead and useless. Now someone may argue, some people have faith and others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I'll show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you! Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish! Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. The Apostle James illustrates faith with the lives of two very different, even unexpected people. Abraham and Rahab, one was the pillar of the community, while the latter was the kind of person your mother warned you about. In teaching us about the nature of faith as including both belief and behavior, James throws a curveball that neither legalists nor hedonists can handle. The legalists among us, those who want to judge others, come in all sizes and shapes, as do the want-nothing-to-do-with-religion hedonists. But in the end, the one unalterable similarity between the two is arrogance. Legalists, who have the Ten Commandments tattooed on the inside of their eyelids, want to catch people in the act of doing their bad stuff and make sure that they're exposed. Hedonists, on the other hand, who are committed to having fun and whatever else pleases them, don't much care to please anyone else, God or legalists including. Both legalists and hedonists are found in the pews on Sundays. As a side note here, I'm sure Satan does his best to make sure that they sit near each other in order to stir the pot of contention. That's the only explanation I can find for people who quote the Apostles' Creed from memory, talk about love, and claim to be people of faith, but act like the Hatfields and McCoys destroying each other and thereby making growth in the church an impossibility. Hatfields and McCoys, indeed. I knew a descendant of one of those families. She was a dear lady who was a church member where I served as pastor. Naomi was just nanny to us, and her sweet disposition would never let you believe she belonged to a warring tribe like the Hatfields. I asked her one time what the feud was about, and her answer was classic. She said, nobody really remembers. The reason that feud started may not have been important enough to get it right in the history books, but the works speak for themselves. One source says that 13 people were killed, 8 jailed, and 1 was hanged in the war between the Hatfields and the McCoys. The website said, it started over a pig. Well, our beloved Naomi, Nanny Perry, didn't exhibit any of the warring characteristics of her forebearers. It's amazing how faith can change even that which is started by a pig. For you today, whether you hail from an Abraham family or a Rahab family, whenever the pig wants to start a ruckus, it's time to remember that you can be better than that. As the old expression has it, never get into a mudslinging contest with a pig. You'll both get mud on you, and the pig loves it. 
Rather, let your faith be largely seen by your works of love as you respond to Jesus' call. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.